Hi, and welcome to your weekly wrap-up for this Friday, August 9th, 2024. Thank you for joining us as always. We truly appreciate the support. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. So this week's show, as you know, we had Derek Johnson and SGN on, which we're always pleased to have. And we pray that you received a lot of good and useful informational insight based on their shares and musings and facts. And we look forward to next week's shows where we have Dave Champion returning for a third time. This time he's going to be talking about body science and how to capitalize on the body's uh, energy and nutrition to use it for your benefit and favor. Uh, so we're going to need that going forward. And even right now, as a matter of fact, uh, we have a unique twist this month. We have a prophetess, Carolyn Dennis, who our team vetted, and I had a chance to speak with her, and I really enjoyed uh, the fruits that God has shown her, and I have deemed them to be um, true and honorable and usable for purposes of the podcast. So she's going to be talking about many things that Lord, the Lord has shown her specifically with wealth transfer that she was not privy to before. So uh, hopefully you enjoy a lot of her uh, prophetic insights as well. <clears throat> and we have good friend Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin coming back on in the monthly symposium to give us his updates on all things financial. And of course, good brother and mensch Eli Weber, who uh, who is a, is a good man in his own right. And I always enjoy our discourse and we hope you do as well. So here are the headlines. Cons Home Plus regulars, you'll need to start looking for another home goods store in your city. The 134-year-old retailer and seller of furniture, appliances, and tech has announced that it'll be closing all 174 locations across 15 states. This news comes after the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier in July. Sugar Bees is closing after nearly two years of business. An 84-year-old man is suing Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC, alleging he was forced to resign from his executive position in 2023 due to his frustration with hearing negative management comments about his age and health problems and out of fear he could lose his licenses. Burke Williams Francis Los Angeles Superior Court lawsuit also alleges wrongful termination, whistleblower retaliation, failure to provide accommodations and engage within the interactive process, negligent hiring supervision, retention, failure to present, prevent discrimination, harassment, and or retaliation and intentional infliction of emotional distress. As widely anticipated yesterday, uh, or excuse me, earlier this week, Judge Torres ordered Ripple to pay $125 million in civil penalties, officially ending the SEC's longstanding stronghold and stranglehold uh, and fraudulent lawsuit, concluding once and for all that XRP, as we know, is not a security. We now watch to see if the SEC will appeal the case. Most likely they will not as part of terms of settlement, which we will know now that XRP is soar, free to soar along with Ethereum and soon the dinar. So those of you who want to know about currency information, you just got it. Jeff Bezos's net worth shrank by 15.2 billion on last Friday, leading a wide ranging slump that erased 134 billion from the fortune of the 500 richest people within the world. Shares of Amazon.com Inc. slid 8.8% amid a broader sell-off in the market, dropping Bezos' net worth to $195.5 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. The one-day wipeout is the third worst trailing only April 4th, 2019, when Amazon's co-founder Wealth uh, tumbled $36 billion following his divorce settlement in April 29th, 2022, when Amazon shares plunged 14%. CVS Health on Wednesday cut its 2024 earnings outlook and announced its goal to cut $2 billion in costs through a multi-year productivity initiative as medical costs continue to rise. CVS, report, CVS reported that its adjusted earnings for the year will now be in the range of $6.40 to $6.65 a share, down from its earlier projection of at least $7 a share. This change reflects the, quote, continued pressure in the healthcare benefits segment, quote unquote, the company said. A prominent Vietnamese business tycoon has been found guilty of defrauding stockholders nearly $150 million, 117 million euro comparison by falsely inflating the value of his company in a case that comes as the government cracks down on a widespread corruption within the country. The Hanoi People's Court sentenced Trin Von Quet, 48 to 21 years in prison after a two week trial that included 49 defendants who were named as accomplices, state run VN Express reported. <clears throat> According to Reuters, a solar firm SunPower said late on Monday it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy 
in the US and entered into a staking horse agreement with complete Solaria to sell some of its business for 45 million worth of cash. Shares of San Jose, California headquartered Sun Powers were down about 29% at 57 cents pre-market on Tuesday. As you know, Big Lots, one of the bigger discount retail chain stores within America has more than 1300 locations nationwide. The discount chain has had its share of ups and downs as the decades have passed. Early in 2024, Big Lots estimated it would be closing 35 to 40 stores nationwide that were struggling according to SEC filings. The chain warned of its ability to survive as a quote, a quote, going concern, fixed quote. As the media outlet adapts to a shifting industry landscape, Axios is enacting layoffs, impacting around 50 staffers, CEO Jim Van de Hey announced in an internal memo on Tuesday. In the Axios signature, <coughs> excuse me, quote unquote, smart brevity writing model, Van de Hey informed the workforce that the outlet would be eliminating 50 positions to quote, get ahead of the tectonic shifts in the media technology and reader needs and habits. HR apparently overwhelmed by the attempt to sack 12 and people in one day, Dell has made a, yet another round of layoffs, which the register understands have deep cuts and has seen even more company veterans let go. HR exit meetings kicked off on Tuesday morning, spurring a wave of LinkedIn status changes while others found comfort venting on trading information and online forms. Broadcasting Cable, founded in 1931 as Broadcasting, will print its final issue in September of this year. The parent company Future also is closing multi-channel news, a publication focused on the pay TV business that has existed since 1980. Newsletters put out by both outlets will also cease publication. Let's see. With more than 500,000 customers and a 39-year track record, SunPower is one of the top solar companies in the country, but it has struggled in recent months suspending leases and sales of solar panels. Therefore, SunPower is filed voluntarily for Chapter 11 protection as of Monday. Here are the latest updates of layoffs, specifically in the tech sector. This is according to Genevieve Rofdechter on X. Dell cuts 15% of their workforce, Intel 15%, Intuit 10%, PayPal 9%. Unity Software cuts 25% of their workforce. Twitch cuts 35%. Bumble, 30%. Expedia, 8%. Cisco cutting 5%. DocuSign, 6%. Snap cuts 10%. Riot Games, 11%. Wayfair at 13%. Indeed, 8%. Peloton, 15%. Tesla, 10%. Pixar, 14%. Discord, 17%. Lucid, 6%. UKG 14%, Match Group 6%, Rent the Runway 10%, and eBay at 9%. That brings the total in 2024 of tech companies layoffs to a record of 126,000 people and counting. NASDAQ is now down 12% from the record high, and we still have four months in the year left to go. An iconic motorcycle dealership abruptly closed its doors for the last time after 110 years amid some chaotic final days with the corporation now facing backlash for its woke DEI initiatives. The San Francisco-based Harley-Davidson was founded in 1914 by Dudley Perkins and was passed on to three generations, thereby becoming the longest-running family-owned Harley-Davidson dealership as it survived two world wars and a Great Depression. New Century Food Corporation, which does business as diet to go, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on August 6 in a bankruptcy court for the Eastern Court, a District of Virginia. The company reported it had between zero and 50,000 in assets, between 1 million and 10 million in debt, and between 50 to 99 creditors. With that said here at this time of the recording is the updated status of gold, silver, and Brent crude. Gold is holding up at $2,458.30. Silver $27.51, Brent crude at $78.70. Here is the most up-to-date notable deaths and resignations. Michael Engelman, Chief Marketing Officer for Paramount and Domestic and Paramount with Showtime, will be leaving the Paramount Global later this month. He announced his departure in an internal memo. Co-CEO George Cheeks revealed in June that 500 million in cost reductions have been identified as Paramount Global carrying a $14 billion debt load. 
It's looking to improve its balance sheet. As deadline reported at the time, that means more layoffs in a company that has already been through considerable delaying, restructuring, and staffing cuts since the 2019 close of the Viacom CBS merger. Krista Robinson, who has overseen communications for CBS News for the last nine years, is departing the network later this month. Robinson, who serves as an executive vice president of CBS News stations, wrote in a memo to staffers today, quote, I've been fortunate to work alongside four CBS News presidents, and I know firsthand the positive impact that the dedicated people throughout this organization make every day. As we transition to a new executive team amidst other business changes, I welcome the opportunity to determine the next step in my career, quote unquote. JHA acting CEO resigns. A statement released by the Stark Neck Foundation allowed a change in leadership after the foundation's exiting CEO, Diego Olivia, was replaced by James Strudwick, who came in as the executive director. According to SNF, Olivia left a legacy of strong leadership, dedication to doing the right thing, as well as a clear vision. Kathy Rapola will retire as the national executive director of the Motion Picture Editors Guild at the end of January 2025. Rapola, who has worked as the Editors Guild IATSC Local 700 for over 32 years and has been National Executive Director since 2016. A search committee is being appointed in order to fill the position. According to Washington AP White House Senior Advisor Gene Sperling left the administration position to work with Vice, Kamala, Vice President Kamala Harris. Her election campaign is the Democrats step up efforts to challenge President Trump on policy issues in November's election. Sperling will be a senior economic advisor to the Harris policy team. The shift was revealed by the White House officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss personal matters. According to Bloomberg, Adidas AG is shrinking its top executive ranks as Martin Shanklin steps down as the head of global operations and leaves the company, Adidas said in a statement on Monday. Shanklin, who is 52, will give up his board seat on August 10th, according to the statement after 27 years with the brand. Parts of his responsibilities will be taken over by CFO Harm Omlier with Adidas executive board, reducing to four members and then on. Longtime CBS News and Sunday Morning producer Alan Golds, who retired this week after a 40-year career with the network. Oliver Darcy, the author of CNN's influential, quote, Reliable Sources newsletter, has left Warner Brothers Discovery-backed outlet, leaving the direction of the company's media franchise in severe doubt. A newsletter from Darcy called Status landed in email boxes Thursday morning. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina resigned on Monday, the Army chief said, after weeks of violence due to protests roiled the country and left and led to hundreds of deaths. 76-year-old has ruled the South Asian nation continuously for more than 15 years, but she faced increasing calls to resign after her government sought to quash demonstrations that erupted last month and quickly escalated into violence. At least 300 people have been killed. After over two decades spent working in National Geographic Marketing Communications, Executive Vice President Chris Albert will be departing the company. The executive will oversee Nat Geo's events and installations during D23 this upcoming weekend. Afterwards, he will exit after Labor Day with the expiration of his contract. Daniel Mayer Selznick, a one-time television producer and preserver of film's history, who was also one of the last direct links of the two of the Hollywood's most storied families died Friday of natural causes. He was 88. Kansas City Chiefs lost a member of their Super Bowl uh, six roster, excuse me, four roster this week when legendary safety Jim Kearney passed away on Tuesday, August 6th at the age of 81. Kearney was originally selected by the Detroit Lions with the 151st pick of the 1965 NFL draft after he excelled as a collegian at Prairie View a and A woman's palpitations were brushed off as stress before she died at age 32 of myocarditis resulting directly from the COVID vaccine sources confirm. Legendary England cricketer Graham Thorpe has died at age 55 with Michael Vaughn and Ben Stokes leading tributes to the former batter. Thorpe made his international debut in 1993 and scored a century on his first Ashes appearance, becoming the first England player to do so in 20 years. Steve Craigthorpe has passed away Sunday night after losing his battle with Parkinson's. He was only 59. 
Georgia Aquarium CEO dies aquarium to have limited operations in order to allow the staff to grieve. Charles Cyphers, Sheriff Brackets from John Carpenter's Halloween has passed away at the age of 85. A man responsible for one of the most viral clips in Australian history has died of cancer at the age of 82. The prison escapee and on again, off again, petty criminal whose best known as alias was Jack Carlson shot to fame in 2009 after a clip of his dramatic 1991 arrest outside of a Chinese restaurant in Brisbane was uploaded to the internet and thereby enthralled the nation. Officials with the Dallas Cowboys confirmed Tuesday that former running back Dwayne Thomas passed away on Sunday at the age of 77. No official cause of death has been released. <clears throat> the baseball world suffered a tremendous loss today with the passing of Billy Bean. Bean was the special assistant to the commissioner and MLB senior vice president for DEI. He died from acute myeloid leukemia at the age of 60, according to MLB on X. Bean, not to be confused with the former MLB player and executive Billy Bean, played six years in the majors, spending time with the Detroit Tigers, LA Dodgers, and San Diego Padres. He came out publicly as being gay in 1999 and was the second MLB player to do so, being dedicated his post-playing days to advocating for DEI. Sir Ernest Hall has died at age 94, has achieved distinction in a rare combination of fields as a musician, a property developer, and as a visionary social entrepreneur. Hall's ideals, acumen, and passion for the arts came together in one triumphant project, the redevelopment of the Dean Clow Carpet Mill in Halifax, Halifax, West Yorkshire. This grim relic of the Industrial Revolution was turned by Hall into, quote, a practical utopia in which commerce, culture, and education were imaginatively and fruitfully combined. Patty Yusatake, star of, quote, Beef and Star Trek, The Next Generation, has died at the age of 70. The rap has confirmed. The actress died on Monday after a long battle with cancer. Her manager, Kyle Fritz, said she was surrounded by friends and family at the time of her death. He also shared that a memorial service honoring her work and life is forthcoming at the Los Angeles East West Players, her longtime theater home. Jeremy Strong has died at age 74, wrote more than 100 novels for children in the exuberantly imaginative comic tradition of The Goon Show, Monty Python, selling more than 1.5 million copies. His heartbreak through, his breakthrough, excuse me, was the 100 Mile an Hour Dog, 1996, which won the Children's Book Award and begins, Streaker is a mixed up kind of a dog. You can see from her thin body and powerful legs that she's got a lot of Greyhound blood in her, along with quite a bit of Ferrari and a large chunk of whirlwind. And that wraps up the resignations and death portion. And now I wanna leave you with my simple commentary for today. Folks, the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit showed me this many, many years ago, and that's simply this. Do not be distracted by the things of this earth. Focus on what really matters. This is our time, folks. It's our time to shine as we are children of the most high God and children of light. Do not allow others around you to dim you with their neg endless negativity or dull your shine. We should be excited and extremely encouraged and happy right now. Don't allow anything or anyone to take this away from you. You will see others around you as you already have struggling and are not grasping the real reality of things. Stay in your lane and hold the line. Stay focused on the task at hand, period, end of story. I have to deal with my share of negative naysayers, instigators, agitators, and questioners endlessly, but I stay positive and stay focused. And I'm leading by example to encourage you folks to do the exact same thing because each one of you is an important part in this movement and community. We cannot do this alone. So on behalf of myself and the team, we sincerely thank you for your continued support. If any news breaks, as you saw with the XRP short that has now come out uh, with their victory, we'll bring it to you as always. Otherwise, enjoy the podcast. Stay tuned, stay encouraged. God bless, and we'll see you soon.